some people pronounce the name as Spire. Mm. Spire. Spire. Yeah. Uh, where do you get the name? Because we have uh, Spire in Jinja. Ah. There's a spy, whole road called well, Spire Road and another one called uh, Spire Primary School. I don't know whether it's related to that, but I get it from my dad. My dad was Spire, Joseph Spire Mutawonga. Joseph. So it was his middle name. Spire Mutawonga. Yeah. A, a little bit about yourself. <coughs> Who was Mutawonga? Um, Taonga was a civil servant. Uh, for a number of years, he worked with the government, first in the Ministry of was it Fisheries, and he worked in a number of uh, ministries as a permanent secretary. Even during the time I, he started in 1972, mm. up to the time of his death, he was a civil servant. At the time of his death, he was working in Masaka as a uh, at that time, we used to call them DC. Is that a district commissioner? District uh, commissioner. Commissioners, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. some time ago. Yeah. Around the DC title was used up to around. Uh, he died 19. in '93. Yeah, because the DC yeah. title stopped worked up to around 19. I think 90 around there. Yeah. And each, and by the time he died in '93, it was still uh, used. The title. Yeah. Uh, was still a district commissioner. Yeah. So, w w where is that place you're talking about? What What Masaka. is the place you called home? Masaka. Masaka, but the village itself is called Butozi. Now Butos. it's Chotera on the borders of uh, Masaka and Chotera. Okay. So part of our <coughs> home is in Masaka, part of it is in Chotera. Is that where you are raised or you are born in Masaka mm. but raised in Kampala? I actually wasn't born in Masaka, I was born in Kampala, in Zambia Hospital. Oh. Yeah, but uh, every holiday we used to go to the village, so we have the attachment both to the village and mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the city, although at a certain time we left the city and went to Masaka because our father wanted to be close. Wait, when you say we, you mean how many? You seem, you seem to we have been a good number. Yeah, we are a family of nine, nine children. Nine children, yes. Yeah. Uh, some good boys, number of boys. Uh, that is six fine. boys and two girls, and three girls. Six boys. Mm. So you grew up in a family of many boys. That's very good. So mostly boys. The girls are the first. The first two. Born in Zambia, mm. grew up some time, then you start school. Yeah, but much of my time was in Masaka, the early education, because um, I think it's only nursery that I did here. That is, there, was, there used to be a school called Wande Gear something. That's where I did my nursery because we used to live uh, here in Makerere Chikoni. That's where my father's house was. Mm. Uh, from that, when we went to Masaka, I did all my primary from there, secondary part of it. Mm. Yeah, so much of my earlier life was in Masaka. Which year is that now? Do you remember the year you did your nursery here? Nursery, that should have been, I'm not quite sure, it should have been before 1985, 1986. 86. Mm. Uh, that's some three to four years ago. Do you remember how old you were when you started the... I could have been around six. Six when I... Because I started primary at six, I think. Mm -hmm. P1. At six years. Yes, at six years. Uh, that was uh, Blessed Sacrament, Chimanya, 1987, about there. I don't have a clear <laughs> memory okay. of the time. Yeah. That's so much about the dad and the mom? Uh, my mom also passed away. Nineteen, My father passed away in 1983, and the mom follows in 97. Just three years after? Yeah, just uh, four. Yeah, no, four years yes. after. Still in Masaka? So the father dies when I'm in senior one, mom dies when I'm in senior four. Yeah, still in Masaka. What a shock. Yeah. It's very big. Uh, where, where, was, where were you in for your senior four? Um, senior one up to senior four, I was at Bukalasa Seminary. Bukalasa Minor Seminary. Bukalasa I don't Seminary. know whether you know there. Yes. So then I get expelled in senior four. Expelled. In the first term, towards the end of the first term. So I finished the last two terms of senior four still in Chimanya, the secondary school. It was new by that time. Mm. Chimanya Senior Second, Blessed Sacrament Senior Second. So that's where I finished my Senior Four. 
and then I leave Uganda. Oh, well, expelled for what? It is interesting. <laughs> at that uh, at the age of seven. Yeah, for uh, the seminaries of that time, it could have been anything. I can't sound very sure of the reason as to why I was expelled because even when you are being expelled you wouldn't really be told for some of us. Yeah, you could only suspect that it would have been this or that because all I got was a note that I should try my talents elsewhere. Uh, <laughs> it was in the cartoon but what I think would have been the case, you remember Chick Magazine? <laughs> A chick I remember the Chick Magazine. Yeah, I don't remember who the, the lot of proprietor was. Mm. But Chick Magazine used to have in the middle a picture of a lady only wearing bras and yes. knickers. By, by, by seminary standards, mm. that, that was, was pornographic. So someone was, we were sent back home for school fees. And one of us came back with, uh, there were about five copies. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember us falling over each other trying to get a copy oh. so soon Set after we thing. had gotten the copies the following day they conduct a search <laughs> so i suspect it's that because uh, each, <laughs> no i want to confirm it was eh? that it was by... that because <laughs> all of us who are found with copies were expelled uh, so, the, the, so that's enough clue yeah it could have been that i had other okay. issues like i had been caught with radios many times but i don't know whether it was that Hmm. I mainly suspect it was the magazine. Growing up, what do you remember hmm. has been the most interesting thing that is memorable hmm. to you hmm. throughout school? Nothing really much about school. The irony is that while I'm in education and I continued long after still in school, I wasn't really a fan of school. Hmm. I never looked forward to school at any particular point. Actually, up to now, when I see children going to school, I sympathize with them. <laughs> so I don't remember. There could have been moments uh, of excitement here and there, but I don't remember any particular time when I said that now I really look forward to school. No. Still in school, mm. while in school, what mm. is that game you used to play and enjoy? Football, soccer? A bit of football. Soccer, although I wasn't really that good at it, I played uh, table tennis, I played uh, volleyball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. Basketball, I never tried because of its roughness. Mm. I couldn't handle but <laughs> You call so it rough. That's, that, yeah, that's what soccer. makes it but interesting. The good thing in seminaries is that they expected at least every person to have a sport, at least to try. That's good. And the, um, the facilities were there. I actually want to believe it was compulsory to have something to participate uh, in one. Yeah, thing. yeah. So the facilities were there yeah. for those who would go for long tennis or table tennis or soccer, mm. but you had to be doing something. Okay. Yeah. We now get out of uh, all level and get mm. into A level. A level. So when I was expelled from the seminary, initially, Joining the seminary was mostly my mother's dream. My mother wanted one of us at least to make it to priesthood. It was such a prestigious thing then. I don't know whether it was... Why did you say Yeah, well, even now, even now. I should let me correct that. But I think it has changed a bit now, but still it is. It is. Especially if you look at it as a vocation. So... She wanted one of us to make it to priesthood, I think partly because of that prestige, uh, mm. having one of your sons as a priest. Mm. Um, but giving also back maybe to the Lord, it was looked at as giving back to the Lord, thanking the Lord for uh, the many blessings. Maybe, Lord, I give you a son to serve you. Maybe even that, it could also have been for genuine spiritual religious reasons. Four of us went to the seminary, but none of us made it. <laughs> In fact, I'm the one who <laughs> came closest to making it. <laughs> but still, uh, never made it. Still, I never <laughs> made it. So when I'm expelled from the seminary, by then my mother had just died. I think it was just after, one month after her death. I'm expelled. I finish my senior four. I have an uncle who is a priest with the Apostles of Jesus, Father <laughs> Ben Lutaya. <laughs> so he asks me after I finish my, are you still interested? In priesthood. In priesthood. 
And I said, certainly, yes. I, I had two ideas. I had some interest in the priesthood, but I also wanted to prove uh, the other seminary wrong. <laughs> that, although you expelled me, I'll I still make it. I can find times yeah. and in make it. In fact, I wanted to go back to that seminary as a priest. <laughs> They're still waiting for you. Yeah, They're still want, waiting for you. I wanted to go priest. back, if not to the seminary, at least to the priest who had expelled me, the one who was a rector at the time. So I tell my uncle I'm willing to, um, to continue. And at that time he was uh, working in Tanzania, being a missionary. So he connects me to the seminary, Uru Seminary in Tanzania. And that's where I did my senior five and four. Unfortunately, by the time I was joining, he was leaving, he was transferred. So I was the only Ugandan in the seminary. Oh. Yeah, and I had to learn Swahili and all that. So I finished my a level from there and join the major seminar in Nairobi. Okay. So the major seminary of Apostles of Jesus is, um, it was in Nairobi. So is the uncle who takes to Kenya? No, you he took there? me to Tanzania. Tanzania, okay. But usually if you want to continue after A level, you join the major seminary. And each congregation or diocesan seminary would have its own major seminary. Okay. Or if they don't, they can send you to another of uh, another community. So I joined the one of Apostles of Jesus, which was in Nairobi. So that's okay. where I study philosophy. If you're training to become a priest, you have to first train in philosophy, then later theology. Mm. So I studied philosophy, reaching the third year of philosophy. Where you are studying philosophy Nairobi, in Nairobi State in a major seminary. Okay. So reaching the third year, I start asking myself. Actually, it was the end of the second year. I start asking myself, but is this what I really want to be? <laughs> Do I just want to prove uh, <laughs> to prove the other priests wrong, the ones who expelled me? Do I want to make money? Even at that time, you still remembered those priests. Oh, I, I still did. Done. I still and did. Still had, Ac even up to now, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you still wanted uh, to, to, to prove them. Uh, you know, it's painful when you're expelled for a very clear reason. Well, I'm not saying I should be the one to determine the reasons. Mm. But when you sometimes you can be satisfied with the reason and you say, well... Yeah, there's a time that the yeah, hatred is that mm, really, even mm. if it were you, you yeah. have done this. But then the other thing was that I <coughs> felt that it was not really um, empathetic, is it empathetic mm. or considerate, mm. not humane. I had just lost my mother. Yeah, a month after. And they were aware. Because they even came for burial when I lost my mother. S -s -s what came they to my came for burial. Really. Even other seminarians, they came on the school track. But one month later, well knowing I had lost the dad in senior one, I've just lost the mother, she's one who was four. left. I'm not saying I should have stayed on sympathy grounds if I did not. No, you, you would have, mm. they would have talked to you in one way. Yeah, so I just day. felt that, no, well, given that offense, maybe they would have left me to finish either senior four or to finish that term because it was in the middle of the term. But you're expelling me in the middle of the term, I have to look for a school, I have to look for fees even to finish that particular term. Uh, there is no one to pay. We had actually been left uh, almost destitute, a family of nine. Um, yeah, so it's for those reasons that it was still Th that's painful. What, that's what made mm. the education then mm. a serious subject. Mm. And that's what made discipline and morality at that time mm. a serious subject. And I can tell you that the mm. Catholic Church has been very strict with that. Mm. That for them, mm. for as long as it's a case of indiscipline, mm. there is no compromise. Yeah, and it sure. has kept them going because yeah. of that tradition. Yeah, sure. Actually, looking back, I understand their side as well mm. uh, a bit, although it was still excessive. So, uh, going back to... Imagine um, a, a, an upcoming priest mm. admiring a, a guy in the middle of a magazine <laughs> yeah. with a bra and in then... The middle of, uh, yeah, and in fact it must it, have been uh, it, it, difficult for them because yeah. I wasn't alone. Maybe I would have been spared. 
if but, I was alone, but mm -hmm. it was a number but of us. That's it. So they Just couldn't expect others. That and, you, you, you go with them. We now yeah. get to philosophy. So I'm asking myself, do I just want to prove those uh, people wrong? Do I uh, just want to make my mother happy wherever she is, that uh, finally I made it to priesthood? Or is it really my calling? Mm. You know, at times we would be in church. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would dodge mass sometimes. <laughs> we, we, would have, we had to attend mass every day. <laughs> Sometimes I would dodge the entire week. From Monday <laughs> up to Sunday, I even dodge. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> I even dodge the Sunday Mass. Doctor. So I asked myself, what kind of priest am I going to be? A priest uh, who would be... Maybe, uh, the Christians are there waiting in church. The priest is in bed. <laughs> mass. <laughs> or the, Does it even remain Mass when you... The priest is creating an excuse not to go for mass. At times I would even go to church with summaries of philosophy notes. I put them in the Bible. We used to have time for meditation, about 15 minutes before mass. So as others are meditating, I'm holding my Bible as if I'm reading. I'm reading my philosophy notes. So, I started, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I started reflecting seriously and I felt, well, this is not my calling. In second year now? In second year towards the end, I realized it was not my calling, that I was just uh, forcing it. We had to write towards, uh, I think, in uh, the first semester, mm -hmm. the third year. We had to write a letter applying to go to novitiate because you would go to novitiate hmm. before uh, later going for pastoral work and then joining uh, philo uh, theology hmm. so we had to write a letter applying to go to novitiate and we were all asked to write of course to write what you felt i remember everyone else wrote applying to go including those who did not intend to continue to <laughs> but they thought that if they they show it that they were not going, they could be expelled, expelled as well. at that time before even finishing. Mm -hmm. But I said, no, let me be honest. So I wrote, I said, much as I really appreciate, I've learned a lot from the seminary. In fact, I learned so much from the seminary. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it up to now. So, so much, much of what I am is because of that background. That shaping. Yeah, so I wrote that I really appreciate but I feel that this is not my calling, this is not my vocation. And even if I continued, I know I can make it to priesthood, but I will not make the kind of priest I would want to be, and perhaps not the kind of priest you would want, you want to, be. to be. They wanted me to continue, actually, unlike the first experience where I was expelled. Oh. This time, I was really loved. Uh, for a number of reasons, I was very active academically, I was very active um, uh, in art. I had made so many paintings all over the seminary. Up to now, if you go there, you'll find them. You'll find, oh, some still exist. Yeah, they are there. You'll find them in the dining hall, you'll find them in the library, in, the, um, in church, even in their church. There are so many paintings that I had done. So they had really wanted me to stay. Maybe they looked at me as an asset for the congregation. Mm. And what made it worse is um, now when I finish <coughs> philosophy, uh, when I finally graduate, I get a first class a distinction. The seminary was affiliated to a university in Italy, in Rome. It's mm. called Urban University, Urbaniana. And it had been affiliated for a number of years. By then, I think 15 or 20 something. Mm -hmm. But they had never gotten a first class. So mine was the first, oh. first class That's from the congregation. So now I get the first class, but at the same time, they know I'm going to, to leave. Um, yeah, but still, what I had to leave. interesting twists in your life. Yeah, so that's how I left. So you finally left priesthood? Yeah. No, I didn't leave priesthood. You had actually not become a priest. I left, you left philosophy. <laughs> the seminary. Yeah. 
but that was after finishing uh, philosophy. Who was meeting those costs then? By then it was uh, free, we didn't have to pay. I think um, seminaries had funding from mm. Rome and different sources, mm. so we're not paying. So all my, um, my experience in the major seminary, I never paid my education in the major seminary. Now you want to leave to where? For what? Now that was the dilemma. I wanted to leave. I knew quite sure that I wasn't in the right place, but I was not sure what the right place was for me. I had thought of teaching at university, but I wasn't even sure that that would come true because for teaching I knew you needed a master's, <laughs> Uh, you needed to have a, a first class. Um, so I, I would say I wasn't sure. So I left with that anxiety, with that um, uncertainty. And for one year, I was actually just out there. I would help my brothers. Uh, by then, some two brothers of mine had moved to UK and my sister. So I would help them when they are building here to supervise, supervise their, all that. their works. And then I also worked at a restaurant as a <laughs> <laughs> combining being a manager and a waiter in a restaurant of my uncle. He had just set it up. So I would serve, uh, you would get people coming, it was at Nakasero Market. So you would get people and they command you, bring this, bring that. Yes, and then you sometimes sit and think, I have, here I am with my first class degree. Here I am being insulted by the people. The lowly. Yeah, but you still wanted to, uh, to survive. To survive. Yeah, until after that year, I talked to my brothers. Uh, to my brothers and sisters that I wanted to go back to school. So I came back, I came to Makerere for Masters in Ethics and Public Management, uh, which I finished in two years. And actually, just as I was finishing, there was an advert by Nkozi, Uganda Matters University. Because, yes. Uh, they were looking for, uh, for lecturers and assistant lecturers. Although I was finishing my master's, my master's, I was not sure whether to apply for lecturer or assistant. For lecturer, they had asked for a master's. Which you are not completing. But I asked myself, I had finished. Okay. It was only, I just hadn't graduated. I asked myself, what if there are people with master's and with teaching experience? That will put me at a disadvantage. So I applied for the law. Assistant one. lecture. Assistant lecturer and... I go to, I was accepted. That becomes my first formal job. At Uganda Matters. At Uganda because. Matters University. I had other jobs in between, informal. I had joined Observer, but uh, as a part time cartoonist. Well, you worked for the Observer uh, newspaper? Now, up to now, I still, it's not formal. It has never been, uh, not full time. But since then, since 2006, I've been with the Observer up to now. Uh, now I even write, but I started as a cartoonist uh, there. So 2006, I had joined the Observer. 2007, that's when I joined Uganda Matters University to teach. Hmm. Yeah. So from there, then now assistant uh, lecturer. You also so assistant lecturer. I grow through the ranks um, up to. 20, no, maybe before that, in, I had wanted to start um, a PhD, but I, I, I didn't get opportunities immediately. So in between, I get, uh, I see uh, a call, the Commonwealth call, the Commonwealth scholarships. I said, let me just try this. I applied for another master's. Just try. Hey, now you're applying for another yeah, master's. Yeah, for another master's. It was in ed education for sustainability. I was admitted. I, I got the scholarship. And I ended up being the, I got the Dean's Award for being the best student on the program. It was, it was with London South Bank University. It's very good. 
I got a distinction based on the program, but as I was still finishing that, actually midway that master's, I get a PhD scholarship. Uh, now I had to decide either to, to drop the, the masters. masters and start the PhD or to continue with both of them. I decided to continue with both of them. I did them simultaneously. And uh, I finished the PhD in 2015. Now PhD in what? In uh, humanistic studies. It was philosophy, specifically ethics, but broadly uh, the PhD is humanistic studies. And that was in Holland. Um, yeah, so for the education, that's where it ends. Uh, now I was uh, talking about the moving through the ranks. Mm. So from when I, I became assistant lecturer in 2020, 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. that's when I was, I was uh, promoted to associate professor. But I, I was also working at Makerere for, uh, as a part-timer since uh, 2011. Yeah, 2011. So you, you got into Makerere in 2011? In 2011 as a part-time lecturer in the Department of Philosophy when I was a uh, uh, full-timer at uh, Uganda Matters University. University. And then I became full-timer at Makerere in 2018. Yeah. That's, That's interesting. Journey briefly. You're understanding mm. Dr. Jim Spire mm. Sentongo, mm. popular cartoonist, mm. Chetumanyi. Mm. Uh, we have known you so much for your cartoons, although mm. you, you, your resume seems to suggest something mm. else. Anyway, mm. in just a short break, we'll return on Congo. To take a debia fire, or soma kwe, mukusoma kwe, how does it where do you pick interest in art? Kati echa cartoon the art it's more talent. Uh, in our family, I think there are two people who showed that talent. My elder brother who actually pursued it up to university. I finished his degree in fine art as a professional artist. But for me, I never really got a chance to study art, except um, now the other two terms I told you about in senior four, at Mukalasa they were not teaching art. Um, I remember there is a priest, a very famous musician, Father Namkangula, who after identifying my talent, he actually paid a teacher using his own money to come and teach me. He was teaching only two of us, me and some other seminarian. He's now a priest for the same former. Imagine. So he got a teacher to, uh, for us, but the teacher only came for one term. So hmm. I would say that for all the four years at Wukalasa, maybe you three studied. and a half, I didn't really study art. So when I leave Wukalasa, when I'm expelled, and I join this secular school, Chimanya. I find them teaching art. But I was also in a dilemma that I had eight subjects Already. while at Bukalas. Only eight. And that was the minimum. But the eight included Latin. Leaving Bukalasa meant <laughs> that I had to drop Latin. <laughs> so the dilemma was I had to find another subject at S4. So I knew that it had to be fine art because it's, it's something that I felt I could do. So that's when I, I studied art for two terms. I, I remember when I joined, uh, we went for the first class of fine art. The teacher came in and looked around, he saw some new faces. I said, I see some new faces here. I don't know what you're doing in this class. You cannot join fine art in senior four. But anyway, I'm going to give you an assignment. Whoever doesn't seem to be fit or worthy of being in my class... Will I advise you to... Yes, you'll have to find another subject. So, I remember it was... Uh, the assignment was drawing a stamp, a stem of cassava with the cassava. It had been uprooted. 
So we started drawing, he also put his paper there and started drawing, all of us, the whole class. After about 40 minutes, he started moving around, walking around, checking and looking at what the, we were drawing. Looking at the yeah. drawings you yes. are doing now. So when he came to my desk, I didn't have an art pencil, I had these ordinary pencils, that's what I was using. He first stood and looked, and then he came closer and asked, are you sure you are not studying art? You said no. Yeah, I said no. So he went slowly back <laughs> to his uh, table and he rolled his drawing. <laughs> he rolled his drawing. I'm told that he used to draw and then show using it as a demonstration. Simply rolled it and did not, <laughs> did not show, show it. Show it. <laughs> Perhaps so we are done better at than... At the end of the assignment, he, tell, he tells uh, the class, so from today, if you ever get any challenge, uh, you talk to him, he can assist you if I'm not around. So somehow... First time? Yes, first time. So somehow I become a teacher. Of... <laughs> <laughs> in, my, in my first art class. And from that time, when, uh, when I had that, and I realized that even those who were there wasn't, were not really doing much, no cigala. So I would go there when, when I wanted, and the teacher was not really bothered. I would go, if I didn't go to attend, That's you okay. wouldn't care much. It appeared we actually Jordan became Omani. very close friends. Sigurd. So that's the only time I studied art for those two terms. I got D2. Oh. And going back to the seminary, there was no art, still even in Tanzania. So that's the only time, maybe again, when I was in the major seminary, um, my uncle got had a friend in Nairobi. He's actually a Ugandan, based in Nairobi, a Ugandan artist. So he, they talked, and uh, he suggested that uh, he teaches me on apprenticeship. So sometimes I would go and visit him on weekends just to see what he was doing, and he would instruct me to do this and that but it was also for a short time. So generally I would say that art is mostly a talent and I've been improving it through interest, passion, but it's not something that I've studied. And when it comes to cartoons specifically, In the cartoons. those ones I've never gotten any training at all. Just admiring works of others, being inspired by that cartoonist and the other. You look at their work and pick some, a uh, few techniques in yeah. there you come but you have the most mm. beautiful and interesting mm. cartoons i will say in mm. uganda mm. so far thank you thank you are you paid for them like when you do them um, for the observer yeah observer pays uh of course you know maybe you have a general idea of how uh, journalism pays I here know. i know and even with cartoons it's not really i wouldn't say it's payment i would call it a token but because it's a passion and uh, because I look at cartoons as something that I use for communication, mm -hmm. as a vessel for me to talk about especially issues of injustice or issues of, uh, uh, that I would want to be corrected in society, it's something that I, would, I do happily even without being well paid. paid. So many of the cartoons you've been seeing actually on social media are cartoons that are not published anywhere else. Have you I just any, draw and, and, and post publish. them there without being paid by anyone. When do you get time to draw them? Because you seem to teach mm. at Makerere. How do you juggle between the well, teacher, family and then the others? Yeah, it's quite uh, busy and quite uh, difficult to balance. I would say my social life is the part that is suffering. I don't really have social life because I have to balance many things, writing, uh, drawing, uh, teaching, and uh, some other things that I do. But because this is a passion, I mm. always try to find time for it. I mostly mm. draw when I'm tired. When you're tired? Yes, when I'm tired is when I draw. And you draw this powerful, uh, uh, yeah, powerful communicating? It's, it's mostly when I'm tired. So you'll find me, especially in the evening, if you have observed many of my cartoons on social media are posted at night. Yes. So it's in the evenings when I'm tired, sometimes even maybe during lunch hours. Um, 
So I don't really find it a strain, especially because I have that drive within me that you have to talk about this. Even when I try not to, you feel there is something that is pushing you, you cannot keep quiet. Doctor, mm -hmm. how much time would it take you to, to come up with a cartoon communicating a particular message if you thought about something? You read about something mm -hmm. in the newspaper and you want to speak yeah. it the other way. It depends. It depends on the subject, it depends on uh, uh, the idea itself. There are some cartoons that appear to my mind directly and very clearly. Um, there is, uh, in English, it's called uh, epiphany. Where you get an idea that occurs to you in all clarity. You feel you don't even have to add any more thinking. But just or place just it on to, paper. <laughs> I would call it downloading downloading from the head to, uh, to paper. So some of those can take even 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But um, for many, I would say about an hour because it's the thinking that takes much of the time. Of the time, yes. Yeah, because okay. you have to first think so much about how to summarize whatever you want to say, something that would have been said in uh, so many pages. How do I Summarize it, it in a just very a small image with a few words. That's what takes time. Do you remember a time, any time, that cartoons have brought you problems or landed you into mm. trouble, either with the family or with uh, the government or with any? Yeah. Not really. Only once, and even then, I wouldn't say that they put me in trouble. Maybe close to trouble. That's when I drew a cartoon of um, uh, Mufti Mbaje. I remember during that time, was it 2009 or there about mm. the, the conflicts of uh, Muslim property? Yes. So I drew a cartoon of uh, Muslims digging up a mosque and they were written, it was written on the back probe, sort of a probe team. So they were digging up the mosque. Uh, the Mufti was uh, clinging on to that is it called a tower hmm, on the mosque? The tower on the mosque. So he was clinging on the top of it saying that you ask my guide Allah. Because he had said that in whatever he was doing, Allah was his guide. So he was pointing into the skies, <laughs> pointing into the sky saying, ask my guide Allah. All of that was not problematic. Now where the problem was, in the skies I had put a man with a huge beard represent Allah. Allah. In my naivety, I had not known that in Islam it's blasphemous to... To draw uh, an image of God. draw an image of God or even uh, Prophet Muhammad. So someone writes to the observer. In fact, I saw it in the papers. They never called me. The editor did not inform me. So the following week, I'm checking in the papers and I see a letter. Uh, on this date, uh, you published a cartoon uh, depicting Allah, which is blasphemous. You either apologize or... You go to court. Uh-uh. Uh. Or you will see. <laughs> so where... You feared to see? The, oh, the observer that's right. feared to see and... So the observer did not, they didn't even talk to me about it. They just published the letter. So when I saw that, I was a bit scared. Uh, of course, knowing what had happened mm. by then, we had already had those stories in mm. Denmark and mm. all that. Mm. So since then, I have not drawn about Islamic issues again, um, for a number of reasons. Not because uh, when I'm threatened, I don't draw about an issue again. There are some issues which, even if you threatened me, I would continue drawing. But my consideration was, well, if I don't pay taxes to, my taxes are not managed by Muslims, um, they are not really accountable to me. If an issue is about Islam, I think it's something that I can, I can ignore. It's different from those issues to do with governance. Dr. Jim Spire St. Tongo. Mm. Is it true that some of your artworks are motivated mm. by your strong opposition to the regime? Some mm. of them appear critical too. Mm. Now, it depends on how one looks at it. Um, well, here, any time you criticize or you try to bring to light things that you think are not going well, things that need to be improved, you'll be associated with opposition. 
regardless of your position, even if you're a religious leader, an academic, mm -hmm. for as long as you keep highlighting critical issues that are not in line, which you think should be uh, better, that's how you would be labeled. So I wouldn't be surprised anyone saying that I, I belong to the opposition. If by opposition they Forget mean... surprised, but would you be bothered? Um, I'm not even really bothered. I'm not bothered because, first of all, it shouldn't be wrong as such to belong to the opposition. But if by opposition they mean belonging to any party, of course I don't belong to any party. If what they mean is that I belong to those that would be critical of government if it does something that I don't think is proper. Mm, that's the position here. Then that is yeah, a proper anything description. Anything that causes mm. discomfort to the state. For that example, is, mm. you have put Kampala on tension, you mm. put the president on mm. tenta you mm. put the KCC the exact mm. direction, mm. by just portraying and mm. exhibiting potholes. Well, that was mm. the motivation. You now see then, the trouble you have caused <laughs> in the city? <laughs> well, not really trouble. Now the difference you would find between me and maybe what you would call opposition, and not really even a big difference, is that within the mainstream opposition, maybe there would be also those who push for the sake of pushing, let us make them uncomfortable. Hmm. I'm not the kind that would push simply for the sake of making them uncomfortable. But if I think what they are doing is not right, I'll make them uncomfortable. Now let's take the example of what you just talked about, the, the portholes port exhibition. exhibition. This is an issue about which many, many Ugandans have been uncomfortable, especially those that reside around Kampala. Uh, if you move around Kampala, as a Ugandan, I don't think that's the picture that you would want to identify with. Not at all. So if it makes you uncomfortable, and a person comes up to say that, look, we need to do something about these potholes, not just for the inconvenience, but also the image. This is the capital city. What does it, how does it represent, it represent us to outsiders when they come to visit? And this is the first of the country. This is the first place of check when it looks like this. So at so many levels, it was not but right. But why should that not you, are, you are nobody here. You are not a leader. You are not the mayor. You are not a minister. Yeah. You are not a president. Why should that bother yeah. you? It should bother any Ugandan, it should bother any taxpayer. As a Ugandan, as a citizen, uh, I'm in some sort of a contract with government. That contract involves um, the two parties, uh, me and government. What it involves is that I will play my part as a citizen, I will pay taxes. Every month, pay as you earn is deducted from uh, my salary, and it's quite huge. I pay taxes through the things that I buy, the, so many indirect taxes and others uh, pay a uh, uh, VAT, and so many. Now, if I'm playing my part of the contract, why should it be wrong for me to ask the other party also to play their part? I do not pay taxes, taxes for its own sake. I pay taxes in order to get services in return. But if I pay taxes, the roads are impassable, I have to keep repairing my cars, uh, my car, I have to face all this uh, discomfort, discomfort, I have to be associated with that as my city. But the order here that you mm. speak through leaders, you have talked to the council mm. representing Makere University yeah. where you teach, then he mm. goes to KCC and mm. tables the matter, mm. then you would escalate to a member of parliament and be done. But you took it yourself. Mm -hmm. No, uh -huh. all those are choices. Some can speak through their leaders if they feel they cannot speak. Um, others, if you feel you have the voice and you can be heard, even if you don't have the voice but you want to speak, it is still a legitimate exercise. So I spoke as a person who is uh, affected, but also as a person who feels that there should be accountability uh, from government, from other bodies that are responsible to me. I don't speak because I want to make anyone uncomfortable. Strangely, even the very people that are affected by those potholes every day, including those in government, some of them would come up and say, he wants to tie into the image of government. The image of government, yes. And then he complains in the privacy of his car when he's uh, driving, uh, maybe for them it's even lighter because we facilitate the fuel, we facilitate the car itself. When it breaks down, it's taxpayers' money. 
but you would find some of them complaining about the same things privately. So why shouldn't they join the one who the is speaking? Campaign. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately, when our roads look better, when our hospitals <coughs> look better, when they can serve us better, I think all of us would be happy. We would even be more patriotic. You would be proud of talking about yourself as a Ugandan. When you're out there, you wouldn't be a laughing stock. You would tell others proudly, I'm a Ugandan. Are you, are you? When pictures are moving around, you mm -hmm. say, yes, that is Uganda. I hope you are aware that mm -hmm. it's a government university. Uh, of course. I'm and you also aware that you work for government. You work in the government. I'm, I'm so much aware and I'm also aware. You're also aware of the threat to your job. I'm aware. So much. You're aware? Yeah. Very much aware. And that's where I think um, <laughs> the other problem is. We have come to think about ourselves as, um, as, as people who are, that government is only doing us a favor. We do not really have a stake, but we simply have to do what they want because we are at their mercy. True, if you especially talk, you are government employees. Yes, if you talk... Collective responsibility means that no, even no, no. Dr. Spire uh, uh, is part of the potholes we have. Because you fact, are for government, actually, that's what you mean. Collective responsibility. Sometimes I imagine myself as a, a minister or as a <laughs> vice president, and someone tells me that it's collective responsibility, if there was a corruption scandal, I would go and stand before the cameras and I say, I'm not part of this and I condemn it. Someone should not steal and say that they are stealing on my behalf. Someone should not damage the image of an institution, the image of a country. And then they say, you're a public servant, there is collective responsibility. The collective responsibility involves the responsibility to protect what we have to protect as a country, the responsibility to demand for what we are entitled to. So um, it's not only collective responsibility when there is a wrong thing uh, to hide. So I know that by speaking, of course it puts me at risk, my job and all that. Especially but, your job, um, and you're not speaking mm, once. Mm. You spoke about the potholes, no, government been, promises mm. to fix the potholes. Yeah. Today you have launched, mm. the other day you also launched mm. another health, mm. uh, mm. a state of health mm. exhibition, the Uganda, and health, exhibition. Uganda health exhibition. You have also mm. promised some another on education. <laughs> At the end of huh? the day, you'll be more dangerous than BCG, than Bodwin, mm. and the others, because mm. yours is becoming too much. Everybody's getting mm. involved. I even see mm. ministers comment about the word shouldn't be dangerous. The word should be that uh, I'll be useful to the country. Useful? Useful, and I don't even want to say I because that would mean that it's only me speaking. The reason why so many people have come up to join the campaign, the campaign exhibition, yes, to tweet, retweet, is because share. they associate with what I'm talking about. They associate with the pain. I've seen some uh, government officials coming up as though in a competition to post uh, pictures of what is good. Of what is good, yes. yes. We have very good roads here. We have good hospitals, very good hospitals, intensive care units, and yes. you are posting. Where, yeah. I, mm, where I think that they are missing the message. What they are missing is that we are not really in competition with anyone, and that government should not be competing with citizens in trying to express what they feel. When people that you are accountable to tell you that we are not comfortable with this, that you're supposed to serve us, yes, you have done some good things, but, but. we want better here, and that what is really not okay is uh, too much. That it's, it's uh, beyond what is acceptable, even when we know that institutions cannot be perfect. They have mm. shown us good hospitals, yes. good mm. in Elida. Mm. Mm. good theaters, good mm. intensive care units, mm. and, and, and you know, it, it appears mm. that uh, you are left in your only movie. Yeah, no, not in, it's not my movie in the first place. Second, it's not a movie. It's an expression of our feelings as citizens. Those who are showing the good, it's good. In fact, when I came up initially, uh, rather at the second phase, to announce the health exhibition, I indicated among the things that can be exhib exhibited, exemplary cases, uh, photos, uh, videos of things that people are uncomfortable with, of course adding that uh, 
we should care about uh, the privacy of patients. So it's not that I was calling only for the negative, but as the saying goes, the tongue always turns to the aching tooth. When you have all the teeth in your mouth okay, your tongue will, so many times it will move to the one that is not okay. Mm. Because it would want all of them to, be, to okay. be okay. So it's only natural that we want things to be better. And we are not saying that, we are not going to say that we are going to make them better by only singing praises. Second, even when we admit that there are some good things, the nice buildings of hospitals, those ones that I've seen, we know that that is just a small part of the story. What we are telling is the bigger part of the story. You notice that many of them are reluctant showing what is inside the hospitals. Mm. They are only showing buildings. Are ho hospital buildings uh, an end in themselves? Mm. Mm. So are hospital buildings an end in themselves or they are meant for a, a particular purpose? So those who are trying to vulgarize our message will try to associate it with opposition. They try to associate. There will always be that kind of, uh, of propaganda. Uh, you, are, you mentioned something that, ah, you have come up to show this, you are showing so many. For anyone who has known me for some time, my voice has not changed. You have and been in fact, showing. What, what you're seeing now is only seen maybe because I have more audience. But it's the same thing I've been saying. If you try to trace my cartoons over the years, that is the message. You try to trace my articles, uh, newspaper articles over the years, same message. But you are now in competition mm -hmm. with the, you have become mm -hmm. a threat mm -hmm. to Bobby Wine. No, I'm not. You are in competition with Bobby Wine, with the messages. Mm -hmm. You are actually competing mm -hmm. with Bobby Wine because the mobilization mm -hmm. you are doing, mm -hmm. I hope you are aware that, that mm -hmm. a government can collapse because of what you are doing. Um, my concern actually is not so much about whether government survives or collapses. If a bad government collapses, I would be happy. I would only be concerned maybe with what happens when it collapses, uh, that if it just collapses, suddenly there are so many things, the uh, uh, Tunisia case and what came after, the Libya case. Um, but as in the collapse of a bad government, that is, if I'm um, to look at service delivery, if that happens, I wouldn't be unhappy about it. Um, but that shouldn't be our focus, although it's part of the problem. It is Actually, problem it is at the center of the problem. All we are talking about relates to governance. Now, on the issue of competing with VCJ, with Bobby, uh, Wine. Bobby Wine, I think this is a narrative that is brought in by those who want to use this as uh, to, want to use this to fight another war they want to use it maybe to weaken vcj they want to use it to weaken bobby wine or to weaken muntu or to show no they are they are not doing anything my <coughs> uh, view is that everyone makes a contribution depending on what they can do their cap their abilities their talents I'm doing what I can do using my talents or what I imagine uh, would work. While Bobby Wine uh, may not have directly participated in this, while VCJ, actually VCJ has been tweeting on the potholes and uh, uh, the, what the, uh, the health exhibition, but even if they had not participated, they have done so many other things which we cannot trivialize now just because they have not participated in this campaign. E e yes, My problem but, actually would mm, be mm. with those who are completely silent, and they have even been silent before, before when uh, uh, Th that's, people are That's in where struggles. I was going, Doctor, yeah. because mm. even you, mm. Dr. BSJ has mm. been saying almost a similar message like you are saying now. Mm -hmm. He has called out the elites, you mm. inclusive, to mm. come out and speak boldly against mm. these bad things. Mm. To this, that actually one time he said that Ugandan elites mm. are idiots. Mm. Because they, they, they say they want to pretend that they are comfortable mm. when mm. the whole country is bad. And you have never come out, mm. not to join his walk mm. to work, not mm. to retweet his message, not to mm. reply, not to respond, not to give support. Mm. You are coming out now to say mm. or do what he has actually been saying several times, and you have never joined him. That makes mm. your drive selfish. 
I think, uh, first of all, if someone says I've never come out to join either Vesige or Bobby Wine or whoever is trying to make Uganda better, whoever says I've never joined doesn't know what I've been doing or has not been following. I would just refer you to the articles I've written, the cartoons I've drawn. You check how those cartoons have been depicting Vesige and his work. Check how they've been depicting Bobby Wine and his work, Muntu and his whoever has been making a contribution. You realize that my voice has always been there. Um, or about going to the streets, just as I mentioned earlier, I think each of us has their talents. We all have our personalities, we all have our abilities and maybe even uh, points of weakness. Personally, if you ask me to go to the streets, I wouldn't go. Not because I don't agree with those who go to the streets, but knowing my personality, what I can do and what I can't do, I don't think even if I went to the streets, I would even be that productive. So let those who can go to the streets productively to realize some change, let them go. Let those who can mobilize on social media do that. Then those who can use cartoons, those who can use music, the idea is that everyone should try to use the abilities that they have to make our country better. But not that all of us should be doing the same thing. So when someone does something and I don't do it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm not supporting them. I'm using my own front either as backup to what they are doing or as a different kind of engagement. Thank you, Dr. James Paya Sentongo, for mm. this wonderful introduction. Nachawa <laughs> Waliwakusasulapu government sophisticated intelligence. what I would call a conscience. seminary. Nengeri jeva nkuzamwe waka. Bwe nkole chintu oluse bintu ebimu. Chiva kisigala chindi ko kumutima akinyigiriza na echi no che wandikoze. Ndibwe nkwata sent oli ampa de okay billion bili zizo. Gendo okole ebiyo gendo zimbezi molzi osirike no biveko. Wo sirika na emu libu obango mutima go guchakola. Musigala mwe chindu echigana ye. Chinoke <laughs> Ah, yes, as a deed over our more descent and our collachino. The Chemani, a government watch ten two kidded a new Manina over Chimani was so They first study you as a person. I know they know me, Kuban in Amun and Nikuano Jan. And you are the one to kid your dad, you want to walk who are sent at so walk who eighty four. Tevakura and Gachizu. Over the Vandava and the Vandava and Gachizu. I never want to be kind of a way in get them. Ah, president not to go to Chico, 
Manye bi mwa bi manye, na ye is part of the problem. But I also know that there are certain things that he doesn't know. So it is also beneficial to him. Na ye siri na chie nta andi seche mba desi kwa. Wa kuwa wa andu vega seko kuchino, nti neva vera banji, neva chishe, hali nga na ye si chipia. Banda yukana wano unyo mtu wa baru miruwa. Keba kufunye ka neva la vancho wa baru na neva kutegira na wadete wa kutegira. Singa wa kusabu kujio kubaya ambako. Urutalu mm. unokule mbila struggle ni waka njangu tu yambe kukule mbila struggle Tukaka mm. senjo na wega tako siku hekwe kama kiri Nga waka lope no joba yambe ko Jone uh, rida wafo kule mbili Ngana uwe waku viride waku yiride omu vili Te wale anji yiride omu vili Be yiride omu vili Be yiride omu vili Ya kuwa viengeza ko kuogera ko Wadevi nkosa na esi vio gira wa kuwa vi nkosa nzengo omu nkichoka Na haba vega seka vaga seke dovozi mmanyi vaga seko wa kubana vo chiba njiga Uwaru wa kubana vo baulida uvye ukulaba mba chini gaba lala So sija ganti vana Uganda vana njiri nde omu viti Hecho kubiri Mtine um, iwe vansa vanti okujio kolashi Oba kule mbili Okule mbili kutu Okule mbili nga mkule mbeze kubakati ulaba mm. Kubaka waga mkule mbeza mm. gane bikole katu yoke dene bikole wa katu geze mm. President Museveni hizo kusabanti jangu obele mm. kumu enforcement, obele minister mm. kurabengo na avi sisa muungkola. Mm. Mwaka na oposyo ni gandhi jangu otu kule mbele kubaka katibala mm. bienti kwa ati yubili effective mm. orumiru wa mtu wabuli jochi govelete. Mwaka ti mwaka vera. Wane bobi wai na eju kila ya soka kuyimba. Enyi imba mm. zetu wazite gira ama ze kufayu. Kana yuka tunu mm. zetu wakani kwa zite gira. Ah. Kujuu ya ambikuwa kwa te chintu, kwa te struggle. Situla kule mbele. <laughs> Mani boeta vamu vintu nga vino Ne vitu uka kulevo nga chino jechitu useko Echimu kubindu vyo ino nkwege ndeleza vuta cha mukirira Tio soo lo kore nso vye yo kucha mukirira Haa oke okay, kati nkoze chino uka ngendene wali um, Zeche nandi gai ndi yungu mtu wa kore cha soo lo kora Bovango soo lo kunga hava ntuku social media Nga buwe nkoze bakunge Bobo ine dobozi ngomu yimbi, because it's... Uh, bobo sobolo kubwayo ngomu yimbi, no gena ne mbio ufuzi ne wesi imba o, vayo. Nzenga kuwe ne manyi, ne vye njaga lokola, ne vye manyi vye nsovo lokola, ovane vye ne gombo kola. Echisoke choko esi imba kubio ufuzi, echiri imu vye njaga lokola. Manyi ne... Obo otia? Ah, ne voja oku, ne voja oku tia. Siche chimu kubye nandi agado kola. Mbozi nge chilo ozo ndi chifuneyo maso na esiche chimu kubye nandi agado. Manyindi nsobo lo kore da okola vye nkola. Mubifevi la langana katike ngeze zako. Wa de siri, siri MP, siri president. Kwa shaba antupago vede. It's about people trusting you. People knowing that you're rallying behind a cause that they associate with which you can do as a leader or even outside. Hava ine evitone vienja ulo mkule mbele yo mu parliament, mu wabagende wa because this. Sisu we run to Uganda, until as Uganda we have run short of such people. No, nga tumba liza, wachi to yogera kune wechikuwa ata kutugeze, kubi nsonga zebi nya mkamba, tuwa sora kuogera kuna executive director, chongo li musaji ya muivo, solo mkubilisi. Uya minister of health, yogera kune PS, yogera kune minister, haba kutegele bulu unji. So you come out, sora haba kutegele bulu unji, instead of kukwela ku social media. At echi soka, manyo kuogera kubadeo kwa kuunji, kuunji. Wakasoko kuli ya vandu wabogira kubinya Mukampala Wakasoko kuli lente seganya kubinya Wakasoko kuli la petitions kubinya o wapu health Yona yona viva deo Haba vandu wogede, haba tali nze nange njogede nga mpita mkatuni, njogede nga mpita mkuandika Kati nga ambu wa gamba andu woku vilo mulalu mchama Mulamu wa mulamu wa wapu Mulamu wa mulamu wa mulamu what you can get on social media, by the time you resort to such means, the mirundi eji singo voge zeza ako binebidala. Mola wanga kubi ina kebisa. Ti HIV, uweche nyami zechi la chetu, wetu tuuse. The government ya fe nebi tongo le visi inga vi ulida wa andu wako vye kerele. Fiyo siya andi wa dembe ere ntufu. Ba andi ulidene mkutese ganyawa mkuogira mtu natu wala yo petition, mechi mguwa naga haa. 
I petitioned, I know they will respond. Na hili dogo zitelisha uli kikeli. Kwa mala kuwa kerele nola kwa wantu kwa kubuta na kuwa ushe wako. Kwa mala kuwa ole saa, nola ganga hili ya baby hini ya wantu wadi wabi kuwe jifana nyi. Na hili nga banji kufete tuwandi ya gande kole hili. Nzo hude kwe ntu tenga ndi mwevi ya bintu ya bia, excuse me, ya bia kuole saa vinya, ya bia kuole saa, ama luwa hili. Na hili wa dembu teka kubintu vila, na hili wa dempa ndi. Nine vita uvi ya mpandi kabiri inga visatu, bitu nde, uruwa vini. So tetubi genda mulu wako watu nyo mirua. Singa mbade nyine chigende lelo uwe isho kwe simba uwa andiga niti mbi genda mulu wako wani mpola kapito. Na yonti omulimu kwa wano ogusiru wa nsonga. Ogwani. Omuntu waliye uwe daadagalo kuchali la kampala. Gabadi tamanyalo za kampala hizi kule visite. Wamazo mula ganti, ee tulimu malalo merele, ntana ze vinya ze wala ze kachoro nsi ya fe. Ojitunze bubi, abadi balo zani tulina muna haka nigusa. Wala ni, ee. Ulijoba guwayo, na kwe vinyabi, ama debi suwasa Kwe katibali, tuwa lizi mwenda kwa afekti Lepa sobola kujia, kubenzi wajima ze musupu Techa alimuke gombe sa Zendo oze yo engeri, ngeri nchamo yo chitu nolile Engeri entufu ya andi wa denti Bichi, evi andi tunze nsi ya Bichi vye tuwa gala wa antu wa tumanye konga Uganda Tuwa andi ya gado mtu wa chala wano wada yonga daya atenda Mbabu ulira anti ya bandwe bage ndechi gali uli omada Eh, ndechi buga, obi yonjo, vichi Waderu ande inevi zivuri ya evi lalu Na hindi uli achala kuchimuchi buga, chigali, adecho cha anyumia Kwa hindi agade nsi hiyo nga uli ajichali lada ya anyumia aganya Ada ya anyumia miala So, awawa gamba anti chino kuta chifana nyi chagwanga Mbobe njini beba chita Hato ichifana nche guanga yoye ya andi tereze ze ngudo na atazi tereza. Hato ichifana nche guanga yoye ya andi funde kubantu na akola kumaruwa lido na ataga kola. Ngano mula ambu za ati andi wajewana. Na yesa anga mudua lirelea inzo kufida wa. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. Na yaba la ambu za wawuli ya andi wajewana. So, echo kuchusa, watu anche chifula nenge checha checho chetuandi gambi. Chetuandi gambi enti from the core, ani ayonone chifana nche guanga, ani ayonone rinyali guanga. Ayonone rinyali guanga, hivira wenye zo gatako, ya atulubu nye avantu, hivifana nye vifurume yewe rio na yona. Hei, lawe Uganda avantu, hivira watulubu nye lawa polisi, ngeri jie isamu avantu, lawa maruali lawe gafana na lawa masomero. Uyo yigu tuwa andi soke deko uyo. Uwe tuma loyo. Kangeze nga wama ruwari ilo galabi kako. Nigu newa gaba nebi zibu. Eva tuja kuwa nebi zibu. Tebi inza hugu wawo. Ama somero gaja kuwa wama nebi zibu. Na yeka uwe tuwa antutu use ku... Kujifana nchiwa anaya ntiki samu samu. Omundu kwa agenda na jaya haka antu haka vye ilimo somero. Na hata andi koko ole saa kwa yosobolo mwone nye. Omga na ye. Faka hata wa antu benjini viva jeno kuso kwa mwone nye. Hii na yola wa government ya gizeza kwa nyoe kula chine kula chine Na hata hilo jeo kari yo kwa ole sebuli mungu wa loo zenti kwa ichito kwa chiri Na yuwa no chenzi jayo Nchi jayo kulaga chi echifana nye chine na ikisinga che chiri Titule mebi kukumoru wa genyi Kwa andi sose kuoza kufefe njini avali mwansi Na iche tuitamu kukusingo kwela likili la wageni kwa wale nyoka tumadi zebo chyo doktor kwa antuma na basa nigo andi sazo kusinka na kwenye na kuzima yogere kona ye doktor kiza mesije is excellent robert chagula nyi bobby wine jeno yo ili kakuta mseveni jeno mhozka ini rugaba ni kwa andi sazo kusinka na muko na kuzino yogere muko na ye mwenye 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 nga tuogera kuchi nga tuogera kuchi bokuwa kwenye miamu na bonga wa antu bonda na andi sazo basinka na yewe kuwa kwenye miya anti Chechi dala. Unyumimu. Kuhubi ya tuso wolo kole ye guanga. Unyumimu ya Dr. Vesi je kuumbela ye guanga mweli. Kuanga go kava ga kava. Unyumimu ya Bobby Wine. Nikwa na ya loza. Pipo pa wabantu. Chewa waloza na wecho loza. Unyumimu ya muamimu sevi ni ukumugu. Ukumuwa kumbagizi. Muteleza mutie guanga. Sandi wa denabuzivu kusinka na Dr. Vesi je. Na kamu. Na cha hona rebo cha gula nyi. Siri na buzivu. Gondi ya ni Jeno Muhozi Muhozi Kwa hivyo 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 kwa hiv
Sisinkana kunga ambani atembo joini ngo mugendo ino mo project jambo. Emu ke project. Tawajula mo ministro jimani. Emu ke project. Baba bula binga pe wole sabi pe wole sabi. Wole tsunami. Okay. Moyaga katika tukule katika. Whatever it is, na ina ndi aga dendi boku ba kusisinkana tuogera kuvinto ebiinzo kuzimbe guanga. Tetuogera ku go sabolo kudiakuru dalwa inzige kuru dalwa onkolechi. Nemu President Museven era boku ba kusisinkana chenzo huo kuebuza kusisinkana to what end? O kusisinkana ngo muntu ngo boku kusisinkani ya boku kusisinkana omula le chote china bizi. Na yomo sisinkano kuogera, mba nebu uza kuogera kuchi and to what end. Maybe you have to get out of the government we're running. Kwa sikana msafi ni akubule governance. Kwa manyu uzi wa wasajia wa wa hita mkwa wana nyabi 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 nyabi. Kwa manyu uzi tobuli mkweti ka government. So we mulu sisinkana kunyo nyula no chita nyo kandewa wa mma. Kwa unso nyo mkama wangi nalisi si manyu uzi tobu wetisi. Kwa unso nyo wangi. Kukuso nyuwa Bisitu video tutademu Siri na jena wa dekatuni jena Kuvye wa waka wenata deyo Buendo oza nti Na kuteka yoro wa kutamanya Ndiyo mundu ya ndi nso nye Saate gire Ndiyo mundu nebo hawa nga nsibu oru wa waka Nsigela one ngambe Choche na yaga wa gamba Leo kenda kusibu oriso na uchiogra Chie chidako wa upi wa wea Chie chidako Ochokola ya chokola 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 ya so that one you get the Kuwang and Aksiwa or Wachi, Chetwandi you get the Ko, the end you get a Ko, the truth, the end you get a Ko, 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 the end you get a Ko. Get rid of such a book over. Busivanja Kerekubi Kerekuno, Nebusiba Kumikono, Uriado Murida Kava, Vanja Sensigo, Vamenu, but be aware, imagine a very handsome. Gentleman, a lecturer of repute like you to be embarrassed there, be arraigned there, go back to Gunya Weba too. She was a Geroni, the Quecho, Agamba Govech, what Jolo, the Yewa and Pumbu, Ayagalo, Kunirize, Choto, Agumana, Siu, Kaching, the very number Nibi Jirako. I want to be to go on by Vaina Vivacose, Vivaco, and see by Martin Luther King, by Mandela Vani. Ogulamu wa wali wa kuita e wagonda over. Tachita gizanti wete kumbuzibu ngo gulaba. Na ewe uba ngo wizibu najia as part of it. Then so be it. Zesa Simon, Muyanga, Rutaya.